Hello, I'm Dr. Francois Beitou. I'm a rehabilitation physician and I'm the director of rehabilitation services at the Mellon Center. Today, one of our patients has joined us to discuss a frequent symptom of MS, and that is spasticity. Doctor, how, how many, what percentage of uh, your patients seem to have spasticity as a, uh, uh, a symptom? Well, it is actually a, quite a frequent symptom. Uh, it's hard to put hard numbers in our practice because we don't always make calculations, but in uh, published uh, articles, uh, it says that up to 80% of people who have MS may have some symptoms of spasticity. They may not be severe, but they may have some. And others say it may be between 50 and 70%. So it is quite a frequent symptom. Uh, what are the specific symptoms that show up in patients who have spasticity? So people who have spasticity usually complain of muscle stiffness or muscle tightness. And uh, quite frequently, they also mention involuntary movements in the limbs, uh, such as muscle spasms, which are jerky movements, involuntary. Uh, or sometimes a tremor-like movement, especially in the ankle, um, they are is called clonus. Uh, how long does spasticity usually last in an MS patient? So spasticity is caused by the the damage that MS causes to the brain and to the spinal cord. So as a result of that damage, some reflexes are unleashed and become hyperreactive, which we think causes all or most of the symptoms of spasticity. So it may start at any point over the course of the disease, and usually when spasticity is present, it does tend to stay around uh, over the years. But of course, it may vary in its severity. What are some of the specific symptoms that show up uh, with people with spasticity? So other than the stiffness, the spasms, and the, and the clonus that I mentioned, people often report difficulty moving the limbs that are affected by spasticity. Sometimes it can cause pain, and also some of the symptoms may interrupt their sleep and then cause them to be more tired the next day. I would imagine that balance and falling down would be uh, one of the problems. Uh, do you see that much? Definitely, definitely. I think that uh, what we say that spasticity affect function, the way people move around and perform activities of daily life. And spasticity is only one of the symptoms that affects function, but certainly it can cause difficulty with walking, difficulty with balance, or difficulty doing the day-to-day -day, um, things like you know, washing, dressing, or cooking, or um, going to work, or studying. What are some of the suggestions you make to some of your patients with spasticity uh, to keep them safe, I guess? So I think my first recommendation is to ask them to recognize when spasticity is present and to discuss it with their physician or their healthcare provider. I think it's important to report uh, the symptoms, especially if they are bothersome. And then there are simple measures that can be taken uh, to um, treat the spasticity. Actually, spasticity has been shown to contribute to falling, but not, is not necessarily seen as a main cause of falling. But for example, if somebody's legs are very stiff, then they may have difficulty picking up their feet, and then they may stumble or trip and then tend to fall down, for example. W would I assume that walking becomes a problem for people with spasticity? It often is a problem. Uh, we have to recognize that other symptoms like weakness or, or numbness in the legs or loss of coordination also contribute. So sometimes it's difficult to tell how much spasticity causes the problem, but many times we can identify that it contributes to it. Thank you for your attention. I hope you found the information helpful. Should you need further information, you can look it up on our website, which is indicated below.